Indications have emerged that there are underground moves by some within the ruling APC to prevail on the national leader, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, to cede his yet-to-be-declared presidential ambition and step down to a younger candidate come 2023. A former member of the National Working Committee who did not want his name mentioned warned that the party would have to navigate the Tinubu bend tactically due to his role uh, or the role of the former governor of Lagos states that he played in the merger of the APC and the election of President Buhari in 2015 and 2019 respectively. It was also gathered that the President Muhammad Buhari was being very careful not to take any action that would amount to embarrassment to Tinubu as there is also a strong indication that the presidency has set up a team credible or uh, with credible personalities to look out for an acceptable successor of Muhammad Buhari on the platform of the ruling party. Well, joining us to discuss this is Moise Banire. He's a senior advocate of Nigeria. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. My pleasure. Good evening. Interesting. Let's start by looking at this statement. You heard me uh, and the introduction. There seems to be a lot of conversation around, you know, uh, the former Lagos State Governor. In fact, um, last week, if not early this week, we heard about the fact that the Akiti APC um, members were, were divided as to the consensus candidate because some of them seem to be on the, the camp of the former Lagos State Governor. Uh, and we see that he's the party leader. That's what he's called. But why the, why the whole um, arguments and agitations as to whether he would... I mean, he hasn't even declared that he wants to run for president. So, that is my position. As far as I'm concerned, he has not declared that he's running for presidency. And to that extent, it would be speculative for anybody to start thinking on his behalf. So for me, the coast is still very clear for all aspirants. And uh, I wonder when people start talking now about the consensus among uh the aspirants when even the party structure is yet to be established so still a milestone away a mile away sorry now we also know that the apc has i, I spoke to a, an apc um party man i think the um deputy speak uh, the national um, state publicity secretary of the apc i think um from one of the states in the south and he did say that they all have agreed to a consensus candidate and i remember a mem uh, the speaker of the house of um, representatives uh talking about the fact that they, they might have to put it in the constitution uh for all parties to adopt the direct primaries you know system but then of course political parties all have their uh, their their constitutions and they can decide whatever form of you know um primaries they want to you know do but the apc is mostly known for their consensus style of picking candidates do you think that that will work well this time around knowing that 2023 is going to be a very highly uh, contested uh, election especially within parties before anyone emerges but let me first correct the impression that uh, uh, the, the party is just trying to include in its provision uh, direct primaries. That is not correct. As I'm talking from the section of the party, from the section of the party that has always been that provision which allows both the direct and indirect primaries and consensus. So there are three ways, basically, through which somebody can actually emerge as a candidate of the party in APC. It's either direct primary is done or alternatively you are. Well, I, I'm, I'm just going to say what I said again. It's not the party the the speaker was speaking and he was speaking generally about it being included in the constitution of the country, not necessarily that of the APC. And the PDP seem to have been kicking against it because they're saying that every party has a right to decide uh, the different modes of in which they would con you know, conduct their primaries and, and that the constitution should not be prescribing that to them. Uh, that's what I meant. Well, well, even at that, the Electoral right, uh, Act, which is an act of the National Assembly, already provides for it. Is there? There are three ways, even within the. Uh, uh, we'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we're having some interference. We will continue with the senior advocates of Nigeria. We're still talking about the internal politics in the APC. Stay with us.
Well, we're back and we're still talking about the internal politics of the APC as we look to 2023. And we're, we're being joined by senior advocate of Nigeria, Mo, um, SAN, Moise Banire. Um, so before we went on that break, we were talking about, you know, the internal politics in the APC. And, and, and like I said, my question was, uh, what I was speaking to was the speaker, the speaker was talking about in putting this into the nation's constitution as it, uh, rather into the electoral act bill so that you know all the parties concerned would now align but the pdp kicked against it saying that they have a right to either decide whether they want to have a consensus candidate or they want to have direct or indirect primaries but the apc guest i had that day said well i mean if the if that's what the house is proposing that they will go by it but really can that really work in within parties especially now like i said it's a highly it's going to be a very competitive um election come 2023 even within the parties the congresses might be very heated as to who would emerge so should we be talking about direct indirect or consensus candidates and how will that play out well like i said to you is what the speaker said is no news at all is already in the Electoral Act. The Electoral Act was enacted then in furtherance of the constitutional provision that enabled the National Assembly to do so. So more or less, you can say it's part and parcel of the Constitution already, that a party is at liberty to choose any of the three votes. But I can tell you for free from my experience, and uh, when I was in APC, that likely consensus never worked. In fact, what people term consensus was more of a position at all levels within the APC itself. And it can never work, and it's not even working now. You can, of course, right now, as we are talking, APC is supposed to start its congresses tomorrow. Tomorrow. I can tell you, without fear of contradiction, they have no register to do any congress. So they are saying they want to do consensus. But what consensus is supposed to is that all parties must agree, must consent to the arrangement. I'm, what I'm sorry, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I need to take you back. Did you say that the APC does not have a register? As I'm talking to the you, APC like the has been conducting, as we all know, it's been in the news, that they have been re-registering members. The Where are they registering them? Where's the register? No, registering is different from registrar. You think you can register and go away. Have you compiled it? Is it credible? Do people even have access to it? Who vouch for the integrity of it? Before you can have a transparent process, there must be a credible register endorsed by all the stakeholders. I can tell you without fear of contradiction that there is nothing like that on ground as I'm talking to you. It's even so bad that they do not even have congresses at the le local government or what level that will conduct anything tomorrow. Most of the people that they even appointed or nominated as part of state congress uh, chair, committee uh, team, most of them just arrived a day before today and just take a go state. They had a stakeholder uh, meeting to that. I'm talking to you. People have not even got in front of field. Nomination form, much less even screening, much less even knowing those who will conduct the respective election in their various world. Hmm. You know, the other thing is just a sham. <laughs> it's a complete deception. So I I'm, I'm curious now because I want to know how the APC is planning to deepen its grassroots mobilization. I mean, they, they, we obviously see that the party hasn't been doing well in this regard. So uh, now that we have the Congresses tomorrow, and now you're saying that everything is a sham, um, the party has come out to say that they're certain they want to go ahead with these Congresses. Now, if the Congresses, according to you, is a sham, what do we make of the candidates that emerge at the end of the day? And let's not forget about the Buni issue that is also a front burner. Well, I'm of a very, very strong opinion that... If the party had been wise, they ought to ought the process immediately because they are in a cloudy situation now. The situation that they are now calls for is a, a, a total overhaul of their processes and structure before they can even progress for that. The more they progress, the more they endanger themselves, which will be catastrophic at the end of the day. So for me, I believe I saw, I've seen a lot of comment opinions of people all across the board on respect of the Supreme Court judgment a few days ago. And the question I kept on asking is that even from the Attorney General, is that where is the judgment they are analyzing? I can tell you that, that, that today the judgment, the full judgment has not been out. Maybe by Monday we'll be able to get copies and read it. And you cannot, particularly as a lawyer, start commenting or speculating on something you have not read. 
So for me, I would have thought that, like I said, a professional manager or a reasonable manager of a process of this nature will certainly call it, I would, I would put it now, we temporarily up the process for them to have a clearer picture of what is going on around them before they can progress. Because at the end of the day, if ultimately what we have had that the Supreme Court said is correct, then they are just wasting resources and time on any all these conferences that they are undertaking. And that may eventually even endanger all their subsequent candidates, if not the previous candidate that are still within the net. So, so I, I mean, the, the, this leaves me with the because I wanted to ask. I mean, what what direction they would have gone with picking, you know, the candidates? But at this point, like you said, it's it's clouded everything, and and, and one would wonder why they're still, um, you know, bent on going ahead with this Congress. But but going forward, I mean, the APC has been making very bold statements about, um, you know, taking over uh, for the next, you know. Uh, eight years, they have also vowed to probably make the PDP some form of a, a, a regional party. But but really, with all of the things that we're seeing, can that really happen? Uh, if the P if the APC is not able to put its house in order, and we also know the PDP is also, is also facing its own peculiar problems with their governors cross capiting and most of their members moving to the APC. Um, do we also see some form of a disintegration if the house is not put in order and the right choices are not made anytime soon? In fact, from my reason, certainly there will be implosion within the APC. Undoubtedly, there will be implosion as time progresses. They can't run away from it. It's a reality that will come to face them at the end of the day. So no doubt about that, no doubt. And, 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 uh, and going forward, if you were asked to give your two pence on what the APC should do uh, going forward, what would that be? Uh, and taking the president out of the picture, because yes, we know that he's the president and he also you know, uh, represents the party, but taking the president out of the mix, what should the party be doing? Going forward. What they ought to be doing, what my expectation is that by now, stemming from that decision of the Supreme Court, is to await the full judgment, get a copy of it, assemble legal consultants together to analyze, look at it, and then be able to fashion out the, well, uh, the roadmap for them. So, and call their, thereafter, they need to call their neck. The neck has to take a position on it. And that is the way to go. And that certainly and imminently call for the orphan of this project they are going on. Mm. All right. If you want to be reckless, you think, at times there is something, this infinity and arrogance, there's a way it destroys entities, bodies, or individuals. And the kind of arrogance or infinity that they are throwing, they, they, they are exhibiting now, I can tell you for free, we ultimately on them. Because it's just a matter of somebody has said, oh, everybody around the country today knows that the situation is a bit dicey. A normal person who is not reckless, a manager of human and, and, uh, uh, and material resources, should know that in a situation of this nature, you need to stop, take stock before you progress for that. Well, it, it doesn't, uh, from what you're saying, might not be looking good for the APC, except they take a U-turn. Moise Banere is a senior advocate of Nigeria. Thank you very much, sir, for being part of the conversation. My pleasure. All right. Well, that's it on Plus Politics tonight. We'll see you on Monday. I am Mariana Cohn. Have a good evening.